Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of Format Podcast, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And tonight is yours truly, me, Mr. B, Bruce Hope, and I am going to be holding it down solo. Um, my guys had some stuff to do, so um, I don't normally do the Saturday Night Lives uh, by myself, as you know. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to do that tonight and uh, should be fun, should be fun. So what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to chill for a few minutes here. Uh, wait till we get some people in the chat. Then we are going to go ahead and we're going to set it off. And we got some uh, pretty interesting topics for you. So um, let's take a few minutes and uh, let's hang out. And um, yeah, while I while I watch the end of this Florida LSU game and watch the Gators put the finishing touches on the LSU Tigers and uh for those of you who know me, you know I'm not an SEC guy, but I will say, go Gators, right? Definitely. And uh, I'll, I'll break that down to you in a few minutes why I feel that way about it. But, um, yeah, we'll just chill for a few minutes, and then, then we'll get it popping. Yeah, Brian Kelly does not look happy, and I can always enjoy that. There we go. All right. All right. All right. Ooh, Gators got seven sacks tonight. That is, that's vicious. I like that though. I like that. Go Gators for tonight. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, we'll just wait a couple more minutes. Uh, see, see if we can get a couple more people in the chat. Then I'll. Go ahead and uh, do my thing, and uh, we will have some fun talking some sports tonight. So let's uh, let's let's see what's going on. We'll just wait another minute or two, and then we'll get started. <clears throat> In case you're wondering what I'm doing while I'm waiting, I'm just uh, sitting here watching the end of this uh, Florida LSU game. Um, very happy about that. Obviously, Notre Dame is over. They won, so I'm great there. But uh, this is a little bit of icing on the cake, and then uh, – I'll have uh, Georgia and Tennessee on for, while I'm uh, while I'm uh, broadcasting with y'all. So definitely um, should be a good night. Should be a good night. Salam, Sneed was good, my brother. Good to see you, brother. How are you, man? Good to see you. Transformer, you know better, man. You better go to YouTube and hit that like button. <laughs> you know better, bro. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, before we get started, you know what time it is. I'm going to hit my little thing and then we'll, we'll get it. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't i can't wait i can't wait all right so um uh, shouts to everybody who's here, man. I appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, let's get it going. So, uh, we got some good, uh, topics tonight. I think, uh, definitely should enjoy it. Um, first, obviously, uh, as you can see by the rundown, we're going to talk, uh, Tyson and the Netflix dud. That was a interesting situation. And, 
uh, a not so interesting fight. Um, then we'll go go to the NBA. We'll talk about the undefeated Cleveland Cavaliers and uh, are they not getting as much love as they deserve? Uh, we will talk about LeBron James, my <laughs> arguably least favorite player ever. But we got to give him his flowers where they're due and talk about the fact that he is still at it at a tremendous pace for somebody who's been around so long. Uh, and then finally, we'll uh, finish it up with the uh, the NFL and uh, talk a little bit about who is the best team in the NFC. Um, <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, what's good, bro? I'm going to get to that, man. I'm definitely going to get to that. Um, I, it's not going to be a whole topic, but I'm definitely going to talk about it. And it's funny, I was talking to my homeboy about it earlier, and I, I mentioned that exact thing that I can't wait to hear uh, what he has to say about it on uh, on Monday on his show. So, yeah, I'm going to get to that. Somehow, man, you, you're always a step ahead of me on these topics, man. But I appreciate the love. All right. So um, let's get started with some some quick hits first. All right. So the first quick hit, as I mentioned, while I was kind of waiting for some people to get into the get into the um, into the chat here. I'm a big college football fan. As you all know, I am a diehard Notre Dame fighting Irish fan. And Notre Dame continues to do what they've been doing uh, for the most part all season. They have been dominating the weaker teams on their schedule. And that's what the good teams do, right? The really good teams dominate the weaker teams that they play. They beat Virginia today, 35 to 14. I think they were up, um, they were up 28 nothing at half. So kind of disappointing that they didn't uh, score more and really uh, run it up on them in the second half, and not run it up on them in in terms of being unsportsmanlike, but run it up on them in terms of you know college football, the whole eye test, and you got to impress the committee with big wins and all this nonsense. So you got to do it how you got to do it. But uh, Marcus Freeman has this team playing really well, especially after that terrible uh, week two loss to uh, Northern Illinois. And realistically, that's probably uh, the worst loss of any playoff contending team in the country. And Notre Dame is still paying for that, but. They have done exactly what they should have done ever since then. They have taken it one game at a time, one week at a time. What do we say? Go 1-0 and every week, and that's what they've been doing. And they've got two weeks left to do that. They've got Army next week, which could be a tougher matchup than they anticipate, obviously playing those uh, service academy teams with that triple option, uh, wing T, uh, veer type offense is very difficult to defend, takes a lot of eye discipline, a lot of uh, really good film study. And the fact that they're so different, uh, offensively from every team that you will play from the rest of the season makes it even more difficult to uh, deal with. But they have to go out there and they have to get it done. And then they will finish up at USC, who I'm sure a lot of people thought would be a lot better this year, but aren't. So Notre Dame has two games left. They win those both of those games, and they may have a legitimate chance to host a playoff game in the first ever 12-team playoff in the first round. So this this could get very interesting. So that's Notre Dame. That's that quick hit. I'm not going to get too much into it. Uh, second quick hit. Uh, as my main man Bruce mentioned, Colorado Buffaloes. Um, some of you have been here with me for a while. Some of you are newer. Last year on this very show, I said that Colorado coming into the Big 12 had a legitimate chance to win the conference. And here they are with a legitimate chance. I think they need two more wins and they will play for the Big 12 conference championship. And with that offense and with the way the defense is rounding into form and really playing well, under defensive, uh, I think, assistant D-line coach Warren Sapp. Um, you see them really getting after the passer. They're doing a better job stopping the run. You know, uh, no one's going to mistake them for Georgia defensively, but that is a really a much improved, I should say, defensive football team. So uh, they're doing that. We know the offense, when they get going with Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter and the rest of those weapons can be a real laser light show. You just got to keep uh, Shadur Sanders upright. And I believe that by far he's the best quarterback in the country. I believe that by far out of all the quarterbacks coming out this year, he will have the best NFL career. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, I believe by far he's better than every quarterback that came out last year. That should tell you how high I am on Shadur Sanders. I think the guy is that freaking good. But with all of that said, I do believe, and I said it last year, as I mentioned, Colorado has a legitimate chance to win the Big 12. If they do that in their very first season in the Big 12, in Coach Prime's second season as head coach of Colorado, in just the third season since Colorado was 1-11 and overall, with an average loss, uh, with an average uh, uh, point differential of minus 29, they will have made the college football playoff. Is that not a story? Is that not a story? And, and Bruce, he mentioned uh, Jason Whitlock. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Jason Whitlock. He is a, uh, well, Bruce said it. He, he, he is not a big fan of Coach Prime. Uh, he doesn't like the way Coach Prime does things, and that's his prerogative. Uh, but also, um, he, you know, he's been consistently ripping him on his show. And 
Jason Whitlock, uh, he's an African-American longtime uh, sports writer and journalist. And now uh, he hosts a, I'll say, a very conservative uh, show on YouTube, which he has some sports talk. He mixes that in with some uh, political talk, so on and so forth. And I'm not going to get into that, but I will say um, he's not a, a lot of African-Americans aren't huge fan of his, fans of his. I won't say where I am in my stance on that, but I will say that uh, Jason Whitlock, again, he he's the guy who carries the water for the right. That said, I think there's nothing wrong with being able to listen to both sides, whether you agree or not. Right. You can always learn from people, whether it's learning not what to say, learning not what to do, um, whether or not you uh, agree with people. You can always still learn something somehow. Right. So anyway, Jason Whitlock, he's been kind of banging on Coach Prime since uh, last season. And uh, it's going to be funny because he has had to, as this season has progressed, begrudgingly admit that Coach Prime has done an outstanding job. He hasn't used the word outstanding, but I'll, I'll put that in for him. An outstanding job in building up this Colorado program and, and having a great deal of success with it. So it's kind of funny. That's why I'm saying like uh, Monday morning, I will be excited to hear his show and hear what he has to say about it. In these situations, it's funny to hear each week what somebody has to say when they're kind of forced to eat crow, right? All right, so there's that. And then finally, uh, the third part of this quick hit when it comes to college football is uh, <laughs> Brian Kelly, former head coach of Notre Dame Fighting Irish, left the team three years ago. Uh, yes, this is Marcus Freeman's third year. So he left the team three years ago and he went to quote unquote greener pastures. Right. What does he mean by that? He went and became the head coach of the LSU uh, Tigers in Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in the SEC. And so. He left there and everyone was applauding. And first of all, I'm not sure why when everyone knows that he was LSU's second choice, they wanted Lincoln Riley, but they only grabbed him because Lincoln Riley shunned them and went to USC. But that's a different story. Anyway, uh, what's up, Steve? Man, you, you're on one tonight already, I see. So anyway, um, Brian Kelly goes to LSU and everyone's talking about, oh, he wanted to go where the big boys play and he wanted to go where he would have a chance to win. And, uh, you know, he wanted to go, well, really where he wanted to go was a place where he didn't have to do the work to recruit because in that part of the country, right, uh, everyone in Louisiana grows up playing football, wanting to play for LSU. So the recruiting is almost done by itself. And then, you know, you have that small area if you want to get out, maybe grab a, a couple of Florida guys, a couple of Georgia guys, some Mississippi guys, some Alabama guys, right? But for the most part, your recruiting is covered by itself. And then, of course, you know, you don't have the – strenuous academic conditions <laughs> for the student athletes at LSU versus a place like uh, Notre Dame. Obviously you have the weather advantage. So Brian Kelly, he thought he was just going to walk into it. Everything was going to be gravy and that he would be, you know, he would be all good, but uh, he hasn't been able to get it done yet. Now he did get a Heisman trophy winner in uh, Jaden Daniels last year. So shall stand for that. But um, you see, he's really struggling this year. I want to say that's the, that's what the third loss for LSU this year, I believe. Right. So it's third loss for LSU. They just got beat by a bad Florida team in the swamp. What does that say? And you're starting to hear uh, from the um, LSU media contingent. You even heard uh, last week from the Louisiana governor. He took a shot at the LSU uh, Tiger football program. And people are really not happy with Brian Kelly. And it's so funny because as Notre Dame fans, you know, we were all pretty uh, we were not upset at all when Brian uh, Kelly decided to move on uh, to, again, these quote unquote greener pastures. We weren't upset at that at all. But I'll tell you, me personally, as a Notre Dame fan, what I was upset about was that his uh, his coaching staff and that his former players had to hear that, uh, you know, online instead of hearing it from him. And then when they heard it, he gave a quick press conference the following morning. And I think he spoke to the team for less than five minutes. I, I didn't respect that at all. This is a team where all these players literally, you know, put their bodies on the line for you week in and week out. And, and you know, during during the summer when they were getting in the weight room for workouts and all that. And I'm not saying necessarily you owe them, but you owe them better than what you gave them. And that's five minutes to say, hey, I guess you heard. All right, I'm out. You know, and that's not cool. So anyway, all the LSU people, they thought we were just jealous that he was leaving and going to them. But it's funny because. Now they're seeing what it really is. And you're seeing reports if you're into college football about how uh, people in, around, in and around the LSU program don't like Brian Kelly. So every time he loses, we Notre Dame people, we just take probably an inordinate and maybe even unhealthy amount of joy in uh, watching that happen. So it was real cool to watch a bad Florida team 
beat uh, Brian Kelly and the LSU Tigers. So that was fantastic. So that's my uh, that's my quick hits on uh, college football. And um, uh, definitely wanted to uh, make sure I talked about that. Um, da, 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 da. So um, second quick hit. I'm not going to get too much into this because it's just kind of in talks. So we know that I, I know I've been one of the main people talking about the terrible state of the NBA, right? Because you get all these people, I know, and that's mo- for the most part younger people, but uh, you know, the millennials and the Gen Z or who, however you classify them. And they're always telling me, oh, Bruce, you're just an old head hater. Uh, the modern NBA, the players today are so much better. The NBA is so much better. And I keep saying it, the product is terrible. The product is terrible. The product is terrible. No one wants to listen to me, right? A big part of the reason why Le- the, the product is terrible, LeBron. Um, for instance, the all-star game and the all-star weekend, the all-star game has gotten terrible. Why? Guys don't want to compete. They're on all this friendly crap. They don't want to go out there and get busy. Back in the day, even guys who were friends were still going at each other in the all-star game, right? Again, nobody's saying that they should behave as if it's uh, game seven of the NBA finals, but you guys are making a lot of money. The fans are watching you go out there and compete. Give the fans something to see. Even beyond that, back in the day, uh, if you were an athletic player, a high flying player, what was what was kind of your unspoken responsibility as an NBA high flyer and added, uh, athletic player was to participate in the slam dunk contest. LeBron made it cool for those type of players not to participate in the slam dunk contest. Now, I know people because, oh, you're a hater, you're a hater. Why everything got to be LeBron? Because guys were doing it until LeBron decided that he wasn't going to. You can get mad at me all you want, but that is the case. All right. So so we know the glamour event of All Star Weekend, that's now pretty much, you know, turned to dust. And that's the uh, slam dunk contest. Now that's been taken over by the three point contest, because honestly, I don't even care about the slam dunk contest anymore. I want to see the three point contest and what's going to happen there. The All Star game itself in the NBA has almost gone to like turning into the Pro Bowl. In, in the NFL and the Pro Bowl, as you know, is now gone. They don't even play it anymore. So I don't I doubt that the all star game has too much longer to last. And the reason I bring this up as a quick hit, because I was reading an article and this is uh, Sports Illustrated online. And it says the headline is NBA in talks on bold new format for 2025 all star game in San Francisco. And first, the first thing I thought was, man, the NBA is in bad shape, right? And especially the All-Star Weekend. Why? Because they keep having to try and change and tweak and adjust this All-Star game to try and regain some interest, right? And remember a few weeks back, I did the show with President Obama and he flat out told Tyrese Halliburton like, yo, well, he didn't say you guys suck, but basically he's like, you guys aren't playing hard. You need to do something to fix this All-Star game because it's it's terrible and I'm not going to be watching anymore, right? And there are tons and tons of people who would echo that sentiment, who guys who are basketball fans who remember a better day and a better product in the NBA. And it's not just an in my day or, you know, old man yelling at clouds or, hey, you kids, get off my lawn. It's not just that, right? It's really, if you just look at it, you know, game for game, the product was better back then. And so anyway, what we have now, and we know this because Adam Silver was utterly disgusted by the state of the uh, NBA All-Star game for the last few of them, right? Last year before the All-Star game, I think it was in Indianapolis, uh, Larry Bird and Dr. J and those guys literally had to come into the locker rooms and try to beg these guys to compete. Now, are, are we serious? Like, who would have had to come into the locker room and beg Larry Larry Bird and Dr. J and Michael Jordan to compete? Man, those guys wanted to get out there and go get it. But, you know, that mentality doesn't exist today in these modern players. It's absolutely terrible. Um... Yeah, Sneed, you're 100% right. That's what happens when you cater to casuals that aren't loyal to the game. Snowflakes leave as quick as they showed up. That's a great analogy. I love that. Snowflakes hit the ground, they melt, they turn to water. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so um, it, it's terrible. So anyway, NBA in talks on bold new format. So what what is the, I guess, possibly uh, suggested possible new format? Um, Sham Sharania, NBA insider, uh, he says um, – The league, executives, coaches, and players have been in discussions to revamp the league's All-Star Weekend over the last six months, discussing a new format with the competition committee. And so the changes are set to be sweeping. Shams explains, with a new four-team tournament-style format consisting of three All-Star teams and the winner of the Rising Stars game, each All-Star team would reportedly consist of eight players each. So (laughs) that tells you 
they're they're just trying to come up with something at this point it almost seems like they're trying to get anything throw it on the wall see what sticks and try to get something to get people interested in the nba all-star game again and the fact that they have to do this and go through all of this stuff nba players should be ashamed and those same people who are telling me that the modern nba product is so much better man you can just hold that because we see that it's not they're trying so hard to come up with this stuff um let's see um lou what's going on notice none of these old heads say this about any sport besides the nba that's a fact that is a fact because in other sports lou as you know guys are still trying to compete right and it's we get it um we understand that the money is huge in the nba and when you're making that much money it's really hard to to get guys to compete right um i think i've said this on the show here before marvelous marvin Hagler, the great uh fighter rest of god bless the dead he once said it's hard to get up and run six miles when you're sleeping in silk pajamas you know what i mean um lou also says Adam Silver and LeBron James and his agency have totally ruined the NBA, the entitlement, the narcissism, acting like a diva above competition. It's also filtered down. Lou, you're 100% right. I couldn't say it any better. I don't have anything to add to that. You're right. Um, Lou also says, oh, here we go. <laughs> now with Bronny, it's like a bad joke. LeBron fans are basically people that eat at a horrible restaurant and defend it because it's the only place they ever ate at. Lou coming with the great analogies tonight. You're kicking it, Lou. You're spitting fire, bro. Get the fire extinguisher, man. Don't burn your crib down. I appreciate that, though. That's good stuff you're saying because it's true. And I'll tell you real quick, I'm not going to let this devolve into a, a Bronny thing. It's so interesting. You literally have people saying, like, you got so much hate for that man, LeBron. Now you're transferring it to Bronny, which is, like, utterly absurd and wild to me. But, you know, that that's how that's how some of these people are. But anyway, that just, so, um, yeah, back to the quick hit. What they're trying to do is basically take the All-Star game and they're trying to do anything they can to save it because they know – uh, that was a huge money maker for the NBA that whole weekend. Also, they're trying to um, I think they're trying to capitalize on the uh, three point shootout, which obviously we know is now the glamour event with the changes in the way the game is played, et cetera. That's the new glamour event of all star weekend. Last year, you had Steph Curry in a shootout against Sabrina Ionescu of the WNBA champion New York Liberty, which was actually awesome because the year before in the WNBA three point shootout, Sabrina Ionescu she set the three-point shootout record for male or female with the most makes and she shot last year against steph head to head and that was pretty cool steph ended up winning but it, it was really good and uh i think Inesco was shooting from the men's line too the only difference was she was using the women's ball but so that, that was real cool and so now um they are looking to do let's see they're looking to do a, possibly a um nba and w nba versus wnba shootout so not just stephanie and Eskew, but maybe clay uh, thompson would be involved caitlin clark might be involved these are some of the things that you're hearing so we'll see what happens at the end of the day that that tells you that <laughs> steve you're a funny dude at the end of the day what does that tell you that tells you that the nba is in a bad place and they are desperate and they're trying to do every and anything they can do to find something to save this faltering product. That's all there is to it. All right. Um, that's enough for the quick hits. Those quick hits took a little longer than I thought, but you know, you know me, once I get going, I get going. But all right, let's take it to the next topic. And this is, I don't know how long this is gonna be, but we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to do it. All right. LeBron James is still at it, man. All right. Anybody who watched this show knows I have issues, a lot of issues with the way LeBron has done a lot of things in his career. Um, when I have watched LeBron play throughout his career, mm -hmm. I could never for the life of me figure out why people said the things that they said about him in terms of ranking him as highly as, uh, as they did. Um, I still don't believe he's the number two player of all time. I don't believe he's a top five player of all time, but that's not, today is not the day, uh, for me to say that. So LeBron James is, he's going to be 40 in a, what, a couple of weeks, right? He's 39 years old. He's in year 22. We know this. We hear it ad nauseum. And, um, well, LeBron James is freaking, he's hes doing work. He is doing work. He is playing, uh, and I keep saying it. I've said this many times, but it, it's time to say it again. LeBron James is playing basketball at a level we have never seen for a guy his age. That's it, plain and simple, right? Normally, at this point, if someone is still playing, if someone is still playing, they are nowhere near uh, putting up this type of uh, this type of numbers, right? This type of production. So 
All right. LeBron is he's averaging uh, 23 and a half points per game, which is well under his career average, four points under. But I mean, can we really expect, again, a guy, you know, this long in the league with this many lot, this many miles on his body uh, to be able to still put up his his uh, career averages? No, except for except for the guy is averaging nine point six assists per game. I, I, I don't think it's a career high, but it's his second highest assist total. And it's well over, it's what, two, two assists above his career average. He's also uh, averaging, what, eight and a half, 8.8 .8 rebounds. So he's well over his uh, career rebound average. He's doing that as well. And um, he is also shooting 52% from the field, which is, that is awesome. He's, he's getting a lot of dunks. So you're wondering how those old legs are still, you know, able to jump and, and get to the rim that way. And this is where I got to give credit. He's shooting 44 and a half percent from three. So, you know, it took him a long time, but he has honed in on that three ball. And I think part of that is even though he still can get to the rim at times with the best of them, he can't quite do it the same way he used to. So what he understands that he's got to be able to hit from long range, especially the way the league has changed now and you get a lot more open looks. So uh, he's knocking those down at a really, really efficient clip. And on top of that, surprise, surprise. He's hitting 77% of his free throws. Now, if you are that great a player, as they say, I do believe that you should be hitting more free throws, but that's just nitpicking. Um, but but again, when you're that level of player, nitpicking comes into effect, right? Because um, when you start getting compared with all type of all-time greats, well, you have to find a way to separate guys out, and, and that's splitting hairs. But even still, he's shooting 77% from the field, and – uh, shooting free throws, that's long been a bugaboo of his, and that's long been something he's been heavily criticized for. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, Nino says that you're all talking about LeBron not playing D is definitely not watching. The now, hold on, Nino, hold on. Le LeBron not playing D, man. Now, he may get some he may get some weak side, help side blocks, but we know LeBron is not strapping up. Come on, stop that. He, he's not doing that. Um Let's see. Uh, your favorite hater, LeVon, LeBron, is only playing offense, so all this praise is half-earned. So y yes and no, right? I just finished talking earlier about how there's two sides of every coin, your favorite hater. And so I totally get what you're saying when you say uh, all the praise is half-earned. However, I do understand that at that age, it's really tough to demand that somebody consistently sit in the chair. And it's it's not gonna it's not gonna happen like like that in terms of playing defense. But the problem with LeBron, and this is where people crucify him for not playing D, he stopped playing D like long before his his legs gave out and he really got old. So there's that. But even still, um, my my main thing here is to really give credit for what he's doing, the numbers he's putting up, the efficiency he's demonstrating, and even in in the games that uh, AD doesn't play, how he's able to uh, carry the team. Um, so I got to give credit where that's due. And here's a big one. I'm not a guy who is um, blown away by the triple double, especially once we found out like it's easy to manufacture triple doubles in the modern uh, NBA. Uh, we saw Russell Westbrook doing it for years. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still impressive to average a triple double, no doubt. But when you when you have literally your own, you know, former teammates saying, hey, you know, we were boxing out so Russ could get the rebounds, right? We were basically, you know, juicing it so Russ could get the rebounds. So we, we kind of know, like, it can be done in the modern NBA. But um, Laker Nation, I, I feel you, but I wanted to I wanted to, to, to come on the show tonight and I wanted to give LeBron just, just – I, I had to give him some credit because what he's doing is still crazy at this age. I totally get it. I think AD is averaging like 32 a game or 31-1, something like that. He's getting busy, but LeBron is getting busy too. You know, he's he's not really um he's not chucking, he's not taking like a whole bunch of egregious shots. He is rebounding the basketball, and uh, his scoring has gone down. So like, he I mean he still makes sure he's gonna get his points, but at the same time, like he's letting AD do his thing, but he's still getting his. So I gotta I gotta give him I gotta give him his due for that. Um, let's see exactly la is winning because ad is playing that yeah no doubt about it no doubt about it steve i'm with you i'm just saying that in the games um ad hasn't been there lebron has really stepped up and at this age you know with the energy that it takes to do it and that's the biggest thing right we know that you can manufacture triple doubles but we also know that it does take a lot of energy right and at this age with all that miles lebron is doing it and he's got four of those in a row like that's kind of I got to give credit like that. That is impressive. Right. I'm not saying it's the end all be all, but it is impressive. And I'm going to give some I'm going to give some uh, some grace for that. I have to. 
Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, Sneed says, let's talk about the opponents. Braun is showing dominance. It's weak competition. Let's talk about the Cavs game with the Lakers. But but hold on, Sneed. Here's the deal. I, I get you. But I've I've long been a proponent of two things, right? I keep saying it. two things can be true. Who you play matters, right? Because you have to take you have to take that into account. However, you can only play who's on your schedule when they're on the schedule. So yeah, there are levels to the wins, right? If you beat the defending champion Celtics, all right, that's a good win. If you beat the Washington Wizards, not so much. But if the Washington Wizards are on your schedule, they're professionals too. You go out there and you beat them because if you're a good team, that's what you're supposed to do. So, no, not all wins are created the same, but a win is a win on a professional level, right? So, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, Sneed. I do, but I wanted to I wanted to make a point of coming out here and giving LeBron credit for what he's doing, especially – those nine and a half assists per game are really standing out to me. Like that's, I mean, that's, that's big. You know, the fact that, yeah, he may not be strapping down or getting in the crouch, but he is expending a lot of energy that he doesn't have. Now what I'll, I'll say this, here's the other thing, how long this can last. I don't know. It's only been what 15 games in 14, 15 games. And again, he's about to be 40. So how long this can last? I don't know, but we'll find out. Uh, here's another thing that was interesting, right? I know all y'all heard that, um, he said that he plans on playing 82 games this year. Why is he so interested in playing 82 games this year? Anybody want to take a guess? Anybody want to take a guess why he wants to play 82 games this year? Oh, man. Because Michael Jordan played 82 games at age 40? Wow. Mike played 82 games at age 40. Interesting. But, hey, you know, why are we bringing up Mike? He never got his son into the league while he was still playing. But anyway, um, no, Le LeBron is uh, he he's doing what he does. Um, yes, need assists are a testament to teammate scoring. And I'll give you that. But and I'm not necessarily comparing them. But like most people don't say that when it comes to Magic or Isaiah or Stockton or, you know, Mark Jackson or Jason Kidd. Right. If you can get guys in a position to score. Granted, when you play with LeBron, it is very specific how that works in most cases, right? <laughs> in most cases, it's, you know, driving kick and, you know, you better knock down that shot. But still, if you can get guys the ball in position to score and then they score it, that's why it's an assist. That's why you get some credit for that. Now, as we know, what is it in hockey and soccer? You get points for assists, but in the NBA, you don't. So there's a difference there. But th there is still some credit due for giving guys the basketball in position to score. My favorite hater. We can also talk about free throws in favor. Yeah, yeah, the Lakers do get a lot of calls. They have, I think, a pretty large free throw disparity. This uh, disparity. I didn't look it up on the season, but I know there was one game where I think they got like 40 more free throws or something crazy like that. So, yeah, they, they do get a lot of calls. But, um, I mean, it, it, it's tough, man. We, we, we know what it is. We know what it is. But this, to me, was not an opportunity this topic wasn't an opportunity to come on here and talk about you know whether or not the fix was in i'm looking at it and i'm saying from what we've seen from lebron he is playing well and he is playing at uh, an extremely high level and you know four triple doubles in a row very unusual for furthermore very unusual at that age and then you know just playing good basketball all around but again we'll see how it goes and I don't expect this thing with J.J. Redick to last very long before it blows up. You know, he's already acting like a petulant child when he doesn't get what he wants, you know, slamming his chair on the ground and all of that stuff. I'm like, come on, man. Are, are we serious here? Um, and, you know, it's only going to take for LeBron to get pissed off with him and everything's going to change. Right. Because we know that we know how that works. Right. LeBron wants somebody. And then when that somebody stops being useful to LeBron, he's very quick to pull the plug and get rid of him. So, I mean, that's that. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> yes, need. No, you're right. They bring up Mike because he is the benchmark. I get it. But, you know, the LeBron fans there, they're never going to admit that. Uh, Sneed, he definitely needs to clean up the foolish turnovers. Yeah. LeBron is averaging, uh, what is this? Uh, three and a half turnovers per game so far this season, which really it's, it's not any worse than his career. He averages three and a half for his career. If I'm not mistaken, he has more turnovers than anybody, anybody in history. He also has more missed shots than anybody in history, but it's funny. Those aren't landmark achievements that anyone brings up. Guess it doesn't push the narrative enough, right? Um, <laughs> 
0.4 offensive rebounds per game. But Snead, he's never been a great offensive rebounder. Why? Because that means he has to get in there and do dirty grunt work, right? That's why he loves his his Tristan Thompsons. That's why he, you know, loves the, the K loves and and the Chris, but those kind of guys, because he's not he's not the guy to stick his nose in there and do that kind of dirty work. That's not him. Again, you know, he, he doesn't have to though, right? And no one's gonna bring that up because it doesn't fit the narrative. Uh Steve says. If anyone watches L.A., they're at their best when they let Reeves run the offense and feature A.D. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? J.J. Redick, for being such a brilliant basketball mind, he knows that, too. But he can't he can't buck the trend. He can't go against Master, who got him that job. And that's LeBron. Right. He can't go against that. So he's kind of got to uh, he's got to walk that tightrope. Right. So, uh, you know, we, we, we get what it is. We know what it is. But like I said, my thing today was that I wanted to get on this show. And I wanted to give LeBron credit for what he's doing. <laughs> see, you see what I'm talking about? He's, man, you can't win with these people. Here's Bruce. How you praising Braun but crapping on him on the same topic? I'm not. I'm not. But why, why is it that nothing is good enough for you LeBron people, right? Here we go. You're, you're going gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna to piss me off, Bruce. Why does it have to be that I have to worship this guy? Why can't I just tell it how it is? I'm giving him his due for what he's doing. But I'm also telling the truth about what it always has been and what it still is. What's wrong with that? You hear me constantly say on this show, two things can be true. You hear me constantly say on this show, there are two sides to every coin. Why can't there be two sides to every coin? And why can't two things be true with LeBron? Why? Why do I have to worship him? Because you want me to? I'm not going to do it. I'm not. It's not going to happen. Not going to be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's we no, nah, we're not on that here. We are not on that here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know, Bruce. Maybe if his name was Rocking your dreams. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, though, um, nah, man, I it can't be enough for you that I just give LeBron his credit. Yeah, I see he's your king, he should be worshipped. I see that, but ain't gonna happen, Captain. That that ain't gonna make it. Uh let's see. Nino says uh they're losing because other teams got hot from three. That's been most games. But if you if you defend, right? So check this out. Other teams got hot from three. It's a lot easier to get hot from three when you got one guy that's not generally consistently in the defensive rotation, you know? And who would that be? We know who that is. It's LeBron, right? All right. Uh, next up, Steve uh, Sneed, excuse me, says they're giving him assist credits for the guys creating after he passes them the ball. They aren't actually assist watch. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. There's some of that. Um. What is it? Is it? Uh, I don't know if they actually reference it in the rule book. I know when we were growing up, it was always like if it's more than three dribbles, you don't get the assists anymore. So um, and and even in the old days, the assist only came if the player, I think, was moving towards the basket because uh, like the rule was like directly results in um, a scored basket. So the player had to be moving to the basket like a like a backdoor or they catch it and immediately shoot. But if they, you know, if they dribble up, if they dribble a lot or start making moves and then score, then you don't get the assist. I don't, I don't even know how they count it now. I'm really not sure. Braun is also officiated differently than the entire league. He is a hack, <laughs> call the rule book, and he's fouled out in the third quarter. No doubt. But if we call the rule book, you know, half these guys – Half these guys have 10 turnovers by the third quarter for all their walking and carrying, but that's a different story. Um, Steve said, I just want to see a league where LeBron teams don't get the benefit of the full advantage by double digits. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, let's see. Young Disciple says, they don't like when you're objective, Brody. They hate it. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. They beat Wolves, Kings, Suns, all playoff teams. That is true. That is true. They beat some bad teams. They beat some good teams. That's true, young disciple. I can't even argue that. No argument there. Um, yeah. But so, obviously, you all know I'm a Celtics fan. So nothing makes me happier than to see the Lakers lose. But I want to see them lose on a bigger stage, right? I've also said, and you all hear me say this with Transform all the time, the league is better when the Celtics are good, when the Knicks are good, when the Lakers are good, the Bulls are good all at the same time. That's rare, but if we can get three out of four, that's fine. And so I do want to see the Lakers do well, but I don't want to see them win championships or anything. But um, Wolves are a playoff team right now. I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to check. But 
I mean, we know they were in the conference finals last year, although it's not the same team. Totally get it. But I, I get the point you're trying to make. Uh, what do we got? Let's see. Young Disciple says difference in Kobe having record and LeBron having most missed shots. LeBron scored over 7,000 more points. No, 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 no. Young Disciple, we don't get to move the goalposts now. We don't get to do that. Nope, nope, nope. If you have missed the most shots, you have missed the most shots. Uh, that's all there is to it. I mean, that is what it is. Um, let's see. AD go to, goes down. Lakers are out of the playoffs. Braun will take 30 games off. <laughs> no, he's not going to take 30 games off because he's still going to want to get his points and and, and uh, rack his stats up because that's how he is. But anyway, um, this is not an opportunity that I'm going to take to take shots at LeBron. I just, you know, I, I did this topic so I could give him respect where I think it's due for the way he's playing in year 22. There's a lot of stuff I don't like about LeBron. We've been through that. You all know what that is. But today, this segment is not the segment for it. So what I'm going to do, um, which Transformer was here, I'm sure you'd have a lot more to say about this topic. Laker guy, LeBron guy, all that. I'm going to open up the phone lines, 904-219-8264. We took a couple of quick calls about this. Then I'll uh, I'll get to the um, best of the NFC topic. And we'll get out of here on a quick one tonight. And uh, we can all go watch football the rest of the way. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if anybody has any uh, any comments on this, uh, what LeBron is doing here in year 22, um, I'm here to listen to you. I'm not going to argue or debate this LeBron thing tonight because I don't think this is the night or the topic for that. But um, I will, you know, give give anybody an opportunity to say what they need to say. 904-219-8264. Uh, let's get it. For my college football fans, Tennessee is currently leading Georgia 10 nothing, And that would be a good thing, <laughs> except we saw that Georgia is a team that definitely can come back. We saw that earlier in the year against Alabama. And then, uh, you know, if they get going, they can put the beats on you. So uh, uh, long way to go in this game, but it is good to see Tennessee up early. Uh, Brown plays bully ball, which explains the finals record of being swept in the finals the most in NBA history. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. The bully ball thing. So I'll tell you what's funny. Um, even though he plays bully ball, it's really interesting because the league is so much less physical on the whole. I think that plays a huge role in allowing him to be. Yeah, I'm watching it, Steve. I think it plays a huge role in allowing him to be able to play at the level he has for as long as he has because his body has not taken the same level of punishment that a lot of the other all-time greats have had in the past. Tony Tone, what's good, man? How you doing? Pretty good. You All know, right. when you talk about my Lakers, I got a call, man. Hey, man, that's what's up. Let's get it. You know, you know how you know how it be. I know how it is, man. <laughs> I know how it is. What you got? Um, all I want to say is, is man, um, I'm going to take back on a couple things. Mm -hmm. Um, starting off, what he's doing is, is phenomenal. I got to give him his credit too. Yeah. You know, he's putting up some, you know, he's helping the Lakers win games. He's mm -hmm. being unselfish for a change. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree with that. And and I'll, like I'll tell you uh, real quick before you get to your second point, I am impressed. I can honestly say with, and again, it took him a long time to get here, but shooting 44.5% from three, and I'm sure that'll drop down below 40 by the time the year ends. But still, that's impressive for a guy who is not particularly a good shooter throughout the bulk of his career. And he's knocking down free throws at 77%. Go ahead. No, but he's doing it in the floor of the offense. He's not mm -hmm. trying to force it like he was doing the last three years. Right. So, as I can accept it, I can accept the, the triple doubles and all that. And it's leading to wins. Mm -hmm. you know? So, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So, the only thing i got to say is that you got to be careful when you give LeBron praise because, you know, the, the, the fans are crazy. Nothing's never <laughs> yes. good enough for them. Yes. Um. But what I, I kind of find it ironic is that when he went on this uh, triple doubles free, so what was the main topic of the league regarding the Lakers? Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. I said when before he went on this triple double spree, what mm -hmm. was the main topic of the Lakers? Um, I believe they they were struggling, right? No, the main topic oh, was, was AD, AD going and, off. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. AD playing like an MVP. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he's getting 31 a game, 31 and 12, something like that. 
And um, the man, the man got one eye and dropped forty last last night. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, refused to wear a mask. Um, so can't call that man Mister Glass anymore. He's playing no, I mean, no, the old AD would have sat out until his eye healed. He would have sat mm-hmm. out about ten games. Mm-hmm. He sat out maybe what one game, one or two games, and then came right back. Right. And he still got his foot issues going on right now as we speak. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how long this high-level right. play, you know, the other guys got to step up. Mm-hmm. I think Dalton Connect needs to get more minutes. Mm-hmm. He proved it the other night um, when when the Lakers came back and, he, you know, he spearheaded, you know, in that second half, mainly in the fourth quarter. He hit those key shots, but even LeBron said so. Mm-hmm. I think he deserves to get more minutes. I think they need to bring Quincy up from the G League and wave Gabe Benson, give Gabe Benson's minutes to him. That will boost the bench. And I think the Lakers will be fine. I don't think they really need to get a, a bit. I don't think they really need a major trade unless uh, they get another big. Right. Um, but I don't like that they were talking about putting Austin Reeves in that. They should never trade him. So wait, wait, let me ask you this, uh, Mr. Laker, right? What about Bronny? I haven't heard you. you... <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say about Bronny. I, I couldn't even get through that with a straight face. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say about Brian. I'm leaving I, that alone, I, man. I'm leaving that alone. No, no. He, he are, In all seriousness. I was watching, yeah, go ahead. But I, I was watching, um, I think it was, it was uh, Dreamers Pro the mm-hmm. other day. And he made a valid point that I never thought of. Okay. It's like, we're blaming LeBron. We're blaming Clutch Sports mm-hmm. for for this, well, what's going on with Bronny. But no one's ever... Um, stated that Bronny accepted this role. Like he he he's okay with what's going on. He's okay with not playing away games with the G League. Do you do you? He's want okay me, with sitting on the bench. Do you I want mean, me give you my thoughts on that? I I, I never thought about that. that. Right. He, he just made that point, and I'm mm-hmm. just like, that kind of makes sense, but we don't know unless we hear it from Bronny's mouth. Yeah. So, so I'm taking it with a grain of salt. Yeah. So my my thought on that real quick. Um, and this obviously is not a Bronny topic, but my thought on it real quick, I'm sure I mentioned it on the show. I think Bronny has just been under too much pressure subliminally and directly since he was in like eighth grade when LeBron first came out and said, it's my dream to play with my son. I don't think he felt that he could say no. And I think he's got to do pretty much whatever they tell him. I truly believe that. But see, that's... Um Nobody's going to like what I'm about to say, but I'm going to mm-hmm. say it anyway. That's a form of emotional abuse. If you're not letting a, letting a, a man, a, a child, um, have his own opinion and mm-hmm. his own direction with his life. Like, it's going to, if that's the case, it's going to blow up. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. he's only going to be quiet and take it for so long. I mean, he's an adult now. So, I don't want to hear, like, he needed the seven million his dad's a billionaire. Right. You know, Bronny was going to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. LeBron is a very good father. He's not going to let his kids yeah. be without. And he made plenty um, of money in NIL when yeah. he was in college last year. He he also makes yeah. money as a you know a popular influencer, and he does the online game. Like money is not a problem for that dude. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah, it's like everybody's saying, "Oh, he should do." I'm like, man, you can't tell nobody what to do with their kids. They can do whatever right. the hell he wants. Right. If he wants to buy his ass a helicopter, that's his business. Mm-hmm. But um. I really didn't want to talk about Bronny. No, but, no, I, really, I was just messing with you about but, it. So, um, yeah, but um, like I said, he's a he's a grown man. He's gonna find his path mm-hmm. one of these days. He just gotta lace up his timbers and stand up and drop his nutsack and be a man about <laughs> it. What do you want? I think that's easier but, um, said than done. But the last, but the last thing I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna let somebody else um, voice call in, give their point. Okay, is um we. It, I'm just a, he's like when I said in the comment section that he's being a selfish to an extent. Mm-hmm. I still, it still, you know, upsets my stomach mm-hmm. that everything still has to be him. Like he still, he has to be the yeah. topic. When, when all the greats are not at a high level, they they back up mm-hmm. and let the, the the future star of the team be the center point. Right. So he's letting AD be the center point to an extent mm-hmm. as long as they're talking about him. Yeah. 
I, I've it's always cool. felt that way. He, but you know, he's. I've also said he's the greatest, uh, you know, uh, most selfish superstar ever. He's the greatest, you know, narcissist. Like that's just what it is, and and it's not all his fault. They kind of made him that, you know, the media. No, and, I know. And I'm part of nobody that. Make, ain't nobody make him that. He came in with a chosen one, put a tattoo on his chest. Yeah, nobody make him do that. True no, indeed, he, but he was the chosen one. Like think about it. Sports Illustrated put this guy on the cover at 16, and you know Nike gave him this and gave on, him that. Bro. Like everybody gave him everything. Come on, Bruce. Call a spade a spade. Mm-hmm. Like, like, a, like, man. That tells about his character. He just—it got to be. It's got to be all about them. Mm-hmm. And before they come in here and flood those comments that you're talking about, all the uh, yeah. To be a great player, you gotta have an you gotta have an ego. You gotta feel like you're that dude. You gotta be it to an extent. You ain't right. gotta tell the world about it. So. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. People tell you that you that dude. Right. And you just go right. out there and show it. Yeah. This dude got to say, "Oh, I'm the greatest ever." Yeah. Every well. at every I almost said a cuss word, but every every, <laughs> every interview. Right. No, I'm, I'm with you. It's, it's it's ridiculous. Um. And he tries to make it look like he kind of slipped it in. Like, nah, man, you're you're calculated. You know what you're doing. But yeah, go ahead. But last thing, mm-hmm. no matter what, mm-hmm. he's not gonna. He's not gonna. Um. He can win, even if he wins a championship this year, which I highly doubt. Okay. I um, hope not. <laughs> he, will, he will never eclipse the greats ahead of him. He will never I be agree. considered the greatest basketball player ever. No matter what he do, he's never going to catch um, the, greatest, the, the greatest ever to do it. Jordan, because going back to what you said earlier, his story. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We we witnessed him coming in the league, dominate. Mm-hmm. We witnessed his struggles, getting beat up by the Pistons. That's right, getting beat up by the Celtics. Mm-hmm. Um, not getting over the hump. Watching him build a team around him. Mm-hmm. Watching him build Scottie Pippen up. Um, what that an unproven coach and Phil Jackson made him a household name. I don't give a damn what nobody say. He made Phil Jackson a household name. That's right. That's right. And when he finally won and beat the NBA's golden board, the torch was passed Mm -hmm. from magic to him. Right, right. And that's what made his story great. LeBron's story has always been manufactured. I agree. He made his name by the decision. I agree. (laughs) Which caused a whole lot of backlash. Mm -hmm. And then he's forcing his own narrative. That's his story. And that's what his story is going to be. When he retires, all of it's going to come out in the light. Um, the media is slowly turning on him right now. I was just about to say that. Isn't that interesting how more and more you're seeing that? The media, because of his nonsense, they're being forced to call him out, and most of the mainstream media hates it. They're being forced to call him out. His former teammates are calling him out. Like This stuff is out there, and I really find it so interesting because you can see that. they, Like Brian Windhorst was forced to call him out the other day when it was uh, put out there that Bronny won't be flying United Airlines with his uh, G League teammates for road trips. And you could see it, it, it almost hurt him to have to actually critique LeBron and Bronny. He couldn't stand it, but he had to do it. And I'm, I'm enjoying seeing that. They are really, like, bothered by it. I'm going to give a shout-out to Nino. He's absolutely right, Vincent. He is out there BS. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, he's the one doing that crown gyrating. Yeah, he's the one doing yeah. all that. All that. Nobody's putting forth him to do all that. That's I right. mean, he's a narcissistic weirdo. Well, I think we can also just, we can also agree that. Yeah, we can also agree that though he has mastered him and Clutch have mastered the media. They know that whether it's positive or negative, no matter how they feel about it, once you are, you know, people are talking about you is a good thing. They, you can tell, they clearly subscribe to the there's no such thing as bad publicity mentality. You know what I mean? So. And I give them that though. They, they made it all about, they made it all about him and made them one of the most powerful, um, uh, agencies in the NBA. I give it to correct. that. It's a black on black on business. That's right. But Bruce, it's always a pleasure. I can talk basketball all day. I, I, I see, man. Hold I love your, it. <laughs> I don't want to hold up your show. Right. Um, wish my, Wish my eighth graders good luck tomorrow. They just made it to the championship in their league today. Okay, okay. What's so, the name of the team? Um, 
it's my academy, Hurricane Academy. We're in a okay. fall league right now. All right. Well, good luck to so, you tomorrow, Hurricane Academy. Uh, shout out to y'all, and and I hope you I hope you win it and take it all. All right. Thank you, brother. All right, man. You have a good night. Thanks for calling. All right. You too. All right, all right. Good call as always from uh, Laker Nation. Appreciate that. Um, anybody else want to call in and uh, uh, give some commentary about uh, LeBron and, and what he's doing and what the Lakers are doing, etc.? Uh, I'd love to hear it. Um, I'll hang on for about a, another minute or two, see if anybody's got any more uh, commentary on that. And then we will go ahead and uh, get to the final topic, talk a little NFL, and then we'll take it from there. And then, uh, you know, once we're done, everybody can enjoy the uh, rest of their evening with some college football if that's what you do. <laughs> um yeah no bruce I can your dream. <laughs> that's where we go that's where we go um all right i'm gonna go ahead now um and all right did what i had to do that wasn't too painful <laughs> but um let's go ahead get to the final topic here and uh we will talk some we will talk some uh, NFC, NFL football. So um, we know in the NFL, we have two conferences. We got the AFC and the NFC. The AFC, man, is brutally tough, has the majority of the best quarterbacks and has really good teams. Obviously, uh, you have the Ravens, who are a fantastic team, but you have an odd dichotomy with them because that's a team that's uh, historically known for just locked down uh, nightmare, physical, brutal defense. This year, they're not that. But the, uh, I guess the lever has kind of been flipped because they have one of the best offenses, if not the best offense in, in football. Uh, obviously, with the guy who has a chance to win back-to-back -back MVPs and his third out of four years, uh, third out of five years, and that would be uh, Lamar Jackson, who is playing absolutely out of his mind at the quarterback position. Uh, you've got Derrick Henry, arguably the best running back in football. Um, and then, you know, you have the defending champions in the AFC uh, who are OK, let's go ahead and uh, let's let's take this call. We'll go back one topic and let's take this call from my main man, Bruce. Bruce, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm all right, man. Hey, what's up with you? I'm talk with my man, Bron, man. Say again? <laughs> What'd you say? What's, say? what's up with y'all talk about my man, Bron, because he has privilege in the league. Uh, I didn't. I don't know, man. I look. I I had my topic, and I gave him his flowers for what he's doing right now and what he's doing this the, season, and that's that's absolutely. It. <laughs> but the last, but y'all talk about at this, the last couple of minutes, y'all been talking about how y'all how he's being a narcissist. And oh, he is that. All this, there's no question. Yeah, yeah, man. Just man. He's he's the king, man. No, no, it is what it is. He's he's the definition of a narcissist in all serious. <laughs> He ain't letting know what it is. I think I think he, uh -huh. he, he ain't letting these white boys running. He, he he abusing his power. He ain't letting the white boys run over top of him in the league. Oh, he That's definitely abusing his power. But when is that a good he, thing, though? It's I, a good thing. Hey, I'm going to do what I want to do. Nah, I'm the king. Yeah. Understand what I'm saying? No. Even though it's fucked up, it's fucked up though. Bruce. <laughs> I understand. This shit is fucked up. I kind of don't like it. But at the same time, I respect it. Hey, I don't. Shit, the motherfucker. It's like, come on, you know, man, I'm owners, man. Come on, it's like, it's like you're going to slave plant plantation, bro. I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to, so, I'm big Doug. I'm big Doug out here. I'm going, I'm going to, I'm the puppet master. I, and then I'm going to use every privilege I got. No. I'm going to abuse all the power I got. You no. understand what I'm saying? No. Go ahead, brother. Absolutely not. I, I don't understand ahead, what you're saying because I, I'll say this quickly. Um, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to let this devolve into a, a LeBron <laughs> thing, but. I'll say simply my my personal values don't allow me to believe that something is not right for one person or one demographic and is right for another. And I think it's absolutely horrible. I'm, I'm very big on consistency. You listen to the show regularly, so you know that. So I'm not I'm not going to be the guy that says, no, that's wrong over here to abuse power. But over here, since I'm normally the abused, now I got some power. I can do it. It's OK. I don't believe in that. Absolutely. That's yeah, that's substandard. I don't I don't rock that way. So no, nah, I, yeah. I definitely disagree, and um, you know that's uh, that's what that is. I, I don't agree. I know you. I know you disagree, but him abusing his power, he wrong for it though. It's it's, it's weird, and it's weird. It got to be awkward for Braun Brawny's uh, G, G League teammates like that when they come around. Like it's, it's yeah. just fake. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. 
No, I, I think it's, it's like I it think it's terrible for him. Yes, I know it. I know. I know you don't like it. You can see it on Brownie's face. It's like it's a, it, 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 it is up the demeanor, like he don't like what's going on. I just I, for me looking at his body, like how mm-hmm. he how he look. I don't, I don't like think he's he does. That's I've been saying that, and remember, I've been saying that because when LeBron first started talking about this, Bronny was only in like eighth grade. So remember, I said that since then, there has been pressure internal and external on him to kind of help to make this happen. So he's got to play good soldier. And obviously, that's his dad, too. Right. He loves his father. His father loves him. So there's no question about that. So that's his dad. That relationship is there, you know. Um, So I, I get that part, too. But there's a lot of pressure on him to go along with this even if it's not necessarily something he wanted. Because you heard him say, this was my dad's dream to play together, not mine. And I'm sure that maybe he wanted to eventually get to the league, but not like this. Do you Think about this. You know that they got to be crapping on Bronny in the G League locker room. You know in right. practice they got to be going at that dude hard. Think think yeah. about what Qu- Quincy probably cooking that dude in practice. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, like, I don't think this is a good situation for him. This is not helping him. But this is why we say LeBron is a narcissist because what? This is all about him. This is his own son, but he doesn't care about the situation that he put his son in. He doesn't care about the bullseye that he put on his son's back. You know what I'm saying? That's why we say he's a narcissist. Well, yeah. In that sense. But I want to say that he's a selfish man because he made all his friends millionaires. So... In the other, on the, on the other side of it, you know, but yeah. I get what you're saying. For in, NBA terms, he most definitely all that, uh, all that. Um, Bronny can't don't want to ride with his, his teammates because they fly from. Oh man, that, that's bad, man. Yeah, that's I think bad. that's terrible. Yeah, I, I think it's bad. And I mean, think about this. Even before the season started, they had like a preseason game in Milwaukee, right? Tell me, this doesn't reek of privilege. LeBron literally out here tweeting like, "Why do we have to go on these preseason road trips, bro?" You're not flying commercial like the dudes before you did. You on this, right. you know what I'm saying? You pampered on this beautiful private jet. You know, you get to eat what you want. I'm sure you take your, you know, your physical, your physiologist and all that with you. Like, are you serious? Are you like, how out of touch are you for somebody who grew up poor to make a statement like that? This is why, like, a lot of people don't like that dude, right? And this is why a lot of people don't like him because of stuff like that. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, so, you know. And again, this okay. this segment wasn't for any of that. I legitimately I wanted to just give this dude his flowers for what he's doing this year. But that's the problem. When you're dealing with LeBron, it always ends up going that way. Because not necessarily you, but because it's never good enough for people. And then it's like, True. okay, hold on, hold on. And then, you know, we got to go down the other road, which I was trying to okay. avoid. <laughs> for, for, for as LeBron, the way he's playing well, um, hmm but you could tell you could tell he's tiring though. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not the same effort on the defensive end. You could tell he even said it the other day that he's only gonna play one more one or two more years. Yeah, I heard him say that. He made that very clear. He made that very clear the other day. So yeah. He's playing well, but you could tell that he he's tiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think he's been tiring for the last few years because yeah, I mean he, he hasn't played real defense in a long time. But right, you know, he exactly. makes he makes sure he gets his own offense though. He gotta make right. sure the numbers are always up, you know. Yeah, he locks in on the defense like when it's real like big games. He'll play a little bit harder, but he he, he never gets back. That's one thing I hate about LeBron. He's yeah. more, he, he... So I w- my bad. Go ahead. He don't get back on defense much. So I wouldn't have a problem with that if if he wasn't the same guy that's barking on his teammates for not not doing what they're supposed to do on D right. He right, won't get exactly. back, but then he pointing the finger and barking at other people. And again, that's, that's another true. reason people don't like this dude because he's always passing the buck, pointing the finger, yeah. blaming somebody else, scapegoating people. Nobody respects right. that. True, man. Like I've been, I've been saying, Kendrick Perk has been getting out on him. Mm-hmm. Jr. Smith been getting out on mm-hmm. him. Couple players been getting out on him. Bro, I'm a um. I don't know if you saw it. I'm a. I'm gonna send when we get off. I'm gonna send you the link right. to the show that I did ahead, talking ahead, about how I- um. Uh, what is it? I, I think I called it like he always ends up proving me right, and I, yeah. man, listen, broke it all down. But yeah, you'll you'll, you'll see. All right, man. Thanks for talking to you, Bruce. I'm I'm still tuned in, bro. No doubt, Bruce. I appreciate the call, man. Thank you for the support. All right, all right, bro. All right, fam.